This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Yisai. Welcome, everyone. So we have a special share today. First, we want to welcome our good friends from Norfolk, Virginia, Gedalia Schwartz and Svi Schwartz and Ellie Schwartz. And um, actually, the people who listen online, they know that Rabbi Gedalia helped us get a lot of svarim. So actually, we're going to use one of the svarim that he helped us get uh, today. Okay, so I want to speak about the Chodesh Tammuz, Habalina Latoiva, which Chodesh this week is when? Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Right, so what month is coming up? Who knows? What month is coming up? Tammuz. Good, are you, Leib? Excellent. So, um, <laughs> um, so I want to tell you a few things about Chodesh Tammuz. So, a few good things are that we know really, if you think about when the Torah was given, the Torah was actually given in the month of Tammuz. How's that? Because Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai, what, what month? Sivan. Sivan. What day? Sixth. The 6th of Sivan. Ari Leib, ever since you won the Chinese auction, you're even, uh, you know, on the 6th day of Sivan. And Moshe Rabbeinu came down 40 days later. And what day did he come down? Shiva Asar Tammuz. So technically speaking, he's coming down with the Luchos on the 17th day of Tammuz. So the 17th day of Tammuz was the day, really, that he brought the Torah down. So therefore, um, Rav Nachman of Breslov says, Tammuz stands for Zeman Matan Torah Seinu. Zeman Matan Torah Seinu. So you'll ask, what happened to the Vav? So Rav Nachman asked that, what happened to the Vav? So well, the Luchos, the measurements of the Luchos were Vav by Vav, 6 by 6. But they were broken, so the, the Vav was taken out of Tammuz. That's what Rav Nachman says. Or, uh, Rav Nachman says like this, we know that uh, Chazal tells us that when Moshe Rabbeinu broke the Luchos, then it brought shikha to the world. It brought forgetfulness to the world. Which means there's a concept that had we accepted the luchas rishonos, you would have learned and you never would have forgotten anything. However, now that Moshe broke the luchas, we had to have luchas shniyos, so now the concept of shikha came to the world. And therefore, Rav Nachman also says, Tamo stands for Zichru Toiras Moshe, remember, because this is the month that created shikha, created forgetfulness. Also, even though it's probably the furthest thing from anybody's mind, but, you know, when Tammuz comes, we don't, we don't admit it to ourselves, but we start to think, Ay vai. you know, Rosh Hashanah is uh, not too far off. Rosh Hashanah is not too far off. We know that Elul, of course, is Anila doi divi doi dili. And Av is what? Elul ba. Elul is coming. And Tammuz is Zamane Tshuva Mimashmashin Uba'in. The times of Tshuva are getting awfully close. So these are all a number of things to think about. And these are things we've discussed in the past. So let's discuss a few new things. Okay, let's begin as follows. We know we've uh, mentioned many times that every month of the year has a corresponding permutation of the Yud Kei Vav Kei, right? We know Hashem's name is Yud, and then a He, and then a Vav, and then a He. And it's suggested by um, the Mikubalim, and it's even in the Art Scroll Sfarad Siddur, that how many ways are there to spell Yud Kei Vav Kei? You have a, anybody know? How many ways are there to spell Yud? You, 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 know, you could write Yud Kei Vav Kei, you could write He, and then a Vav, and then a He, and then a Yud. Right there are 12 different ways to scramble it up. Every month has a, a specific permutation of the Yud Kei Vav Kei, and it's recommended that when you say the words Baruch HaTo Hashem, Mekadesh Yisrael, V'Rashi Chadashim, you have in mind the specific Yud Kei Vav Kei permutation for that month. If you look in the Art Scroll Siddur, they give you on the bottom there uh, what Yud Kei Vav Kei is for that particular month. So does anybody know, what is the Yud Kei Vav Kei permutation for the month of Tammuz? The month of Tammuz is Yud Kei Vav Kei backward. Yud Kei Vav Kei backward. He, and then a Vav, and then a He, and then a Yud. Does anybody know what Pasuk in Tanakh is Meramez to the Yud Kei Vav Kei backward? In other words, where you have a Pasuk that you take either the first letters of those words or the last letters of the words, and it will spell out the Yud Kei Vav Kei backwards. The Bnei Soschar points out, and also the Sefer Kav Yashar, um, that the, the, the Yud Kei Vav, Vav Kei backward is alluded to in the Pasuk, V'chalzeh, Einenu shayve li. Who said those words? V'chalze einenu shayve li. Haman. Haman said v'chalze einenu shayve li. So the, the words v'chalze einenu shayve li, ze ends in a hey, 
Einenu ends in a vav, Shoiva ends in a hey, Li ends in a yud. That means Haman himself understood that the yud ke vav ke backward is a time of din. And therefore this permutation is reserved for in a way the worst month of the year. And what's the worst month of the year? Tammuz. So you say, what? Why is Tammuz worse? Why wouldn't it be Av? Av is not the worst month of the year. Only the first half of it. But the second half of Av is good. In fact, what's the permutation for Av? The permutation for Av, listen carefully, is Hey Vav, Yud Hey. Hey Vav is the Yud Ke Vav Ke backward. Hey Vav, instead of Vav Hey. But Yud Ke is forward. Why? Listen carefully. Because the first half of Av is bad. So therefore the first two letters are backward. But the second half of Av is Latoiva. Is from Tubab and Av is a time of Simcha. And therefore the second half of the Yudke Vavke is forward. So Av is, you know, part is not good, part is good. But the month of Tammuz is just bad from beginning to end. Now why would that be? Shouldn't it only be bad from Yudzayin and Tammuz and on? So let's make an interesting Cheshven. Remember, and the Gemar Masech Tainus discusses the Meraglam. We just had it yesterday. The Meraglam came back on what day? When did they return? Erev Tishabav. Okay. And how many days did they scout out for? 40. 40 days. So is it safe to assume it took them 20 days to get there and 20 days to get back? Okay. Meaning as follows. When did they leave to uh, go scout out the land? Forty days before Tishabav. So the Gemara says it's Chav Tesivan. That means they spent twenty days looking for the bad in Eretz Yisrael. Yeah, what what were those twenty days? The first half of Tammuz, from Rosh Chodesh Tammuz until uh, a little bit past Yud Zayin. So the truth is, the beginning of Tammuz is the day are the days that the Meraglim were like searching out, looking out for those bad grapes and bad figs and bad pomegranates. So therefore the month of Tammuz is a month which is yud Vavke vav Ke completely backward. Let's digress for uh, a little bit. Good question. Why do we diminish the joy in Av? Because, look, at the end of the day, I'm saying a chiddush because uh, the base of Mikdash was destroyed in the month of Av. So that's when... Uh, the bad, that's when the real intense, um, that's when the real intense uh, mourning is. However, the, in terms of a month being encompassed in a, tra- a tragic month, even though we always look at Av that way, but you could really make the case that the, the real Koychos Hadin are in the month of Tamas. You can make a case either way, okay? But uh, for our purposes today, we're, we're, we're mentioning the fact that uh, Tamas is Kuloi Ra, even though Av, in the part that's Ra, it's worse than the Ra in Tammuz, okay? Yeah, but uh, uh, everything bad starts actually from selecting of Tammuz, right? All the halo, yeah. we already started. Yes, yes. And we're saying even from the beginning of the month already, this is the time that the Meraglim were scouting out the, uh, scouting out the land. Okay, so I want to digress for a very short, because I don't want to, I don't want, this is a little bit complex, and that is, there's a, the Kava Yashar, it's actually in the Sefer, that the Kav says that the reason why Haman picked the month of Adar to try to annihilate Klal Yisrael is because Haman was aware of all these yud ke vav computations and he saw that the month of Adar, the yud ke vav permutation is yud ke vav backward. And therefore, if it's yud ke vav backward, as indicated by the Pasuk, V'chol zeh he felt he would be successful in attacking Klal Yisrael. We know that Nisan, which is the first month of the year, the permutation of yud ke vav is Yismechu Hashamayim, which is the beginning of the Yod Kei okay, forward. That's why it's a month of open nisim, open revelation. God is manifest clearly because it's the month that His name is spelled forward. And as the last month of the year, Haman saw that the Yod Kei okay, would be spelled backwards in Bechol Zeinenu Shaiveli, and that's why he picked the month of Adar. So that's a, a somewhat of a contradiction, it would seem, between the Kava Yashar, who says that the permutation of Adar is Yud Kei Vavke backward, and what the Bnei Yisachar is saying, and what we see in our Sidurim, that the permutation for Tammuz is Yud Kei Vavke backward. Yeah? So it's a stira. So in the Sefer Shar Yisachar, on page Yud, he asks this question. You know the Shar Yisachar is the Munkachar? He brings up the stira, you know, make up your mind. When is Yud Kei Vavke backward? Is it Tammuz? Or is it Adar? So he says as follows. 
Originally, originally, the DNA of Adar was good Kevav Ke backward. But Hashem, when we say Hashem was Mahapech Adar Miyogoin Lesimcha, Hashem literally changed the Yud Kevavka permutation for the month, and He changed Adar to a better Yud Ke. Uh, um, he changed it to Hey Hey Yud Vav. But originally it was backward. This is what it means. The ha the ha choidash asher ne pach lo hem yagoyin lesimcha. When we say Adar was transformed from mourning to happiness, it's not just oh we're supposed to be annihilated and nothing bad happened. Hashem went into the very DNA of that month and He changed. He uh, um, genetically engineered the because we know that Hashem created the month with that permutation. So it's not just e. You can't just Okay, oh, let me just switch it around. You know, Hashem had a genetically... Art school knew the change. And art school is aware of the change. It's amazing um, the, how they're really on top of their game. No, but it makes yes. sense. Okay. Because so, anyway, there was nothing, there was nothing special in Adar until Parash. Nothing. Not, not only was it not special, it was bad. It was Tammuz. Well, it was Tammuz. Why was it bad? What made it bad? Maybe Haman was right. That why was it? It's the end of the year. In other words, the beginning of the year, Hashem is revealed and manifest. At the end of the year, He is more behester. And Hashem switched it and He flipped it. Okay, so that's the Chiddush of the monk catcher. Back to the program. So I want to tell you a few things about Chodesh Adar. Number one, about Chodesh Tamaz. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so um, the, the Bnei Yisachar, at, at the beginning of every month, He goes through from the Sefer Hayitzira, how Hashem created that particular month. Now I'm going to tell you an interesting idea. You ready for this, Tzvi? And Tzvi? And Eli? Yeah? And you guys? Ready? That there's a concept that what exists in time exists in space. That there are months of the year and there are places. And there are places that correspond to certain months of the year. Also, every month of the year Hashem created with a different letter of the Aleph Beis. Interestingly, the month of Tammuz was created with the letter Ches. And the month of Av was created with the letter Tes. Now that's not a good combination. Why is that not a good combination, Naftali? What? What? Chet. Chet. Sin. Sin is not good. So, it's interesting. When Yaakov Avinu wanted to reveal the kates to his children, so the Baal Turim brings down, he was going to reveal, he wanted to reveal when Mashiach was coming, and um, he looked into the names of his children. Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zavulan, Don, Naphtali, God, Asher, Yosef, and Yavin, and he saw there are only two letters that don't appear. What two letters don't appear in the names of the Shvatim? Ches and Tes. Ches and tes. So he said, oh, there's no Ches and Tes, I could reveal to you when Mashiach is coming. So we see the letters Ches and Tes are, if you don't have them, it's good. And if you do have them, so then uh, it's indicative of Chet. And that's why this month is reserved for um, sort of the pitfalls that have happened to us throughout the Gullahs. Now, let's say as follows. Every month of the year is associated with a different one of our senses. What senses do we have? We have five, but we, they're really twelve. But the month of Tammuz corresponds to <laughs> Ri'iyah, seeing. That's what the Sefer Yitzhiah writes. Hashem connected the month of Tammuz to seeing. The month of Av is connected to re, um, listening, Shmiya. Shmiya. Now let's make a little Cheshven. Also, every month of the year corresponds to another one of the Shvatim. So the month of Nisan, let's start from the beginning. It's now, you would say, oh, Ruvain, right? No, it doesn't go by that. It goes by the way the Nisim traveled in the Midbar. So which Shevet traveled first? Yehuda. Yehuda. What do you think I'm pointing to you? Yehuda, right? <laughs> so Yehuda traveled first. So Yehuda's connected um, which month? Nisan. Nisan. Why? Because Yehuda's Yudke Vavke forward. So that's the month of Nisan. The second month of the year is Yisachar. Yisachar followed Yehuda in the Midbar. Zevulan followed them. It's interesting. Rashi says that there were three Shvatim that were great in learning Torah. Who were they? Yehuda, Yisachar, and Zevulan. Why? Because they were closest to Moshe. So you would have thought, I understand Yehuda. 
I understand Yisachar, because they were learning all day, but Zavulan were the businessmen. No, you learn from here that people who support Torah, they appreciate what Torah is, they also have to learn more than other people. They have to learn more than other people. Okay. So let's make a cheshman. Yehuda is Nisan. Yisachar is Iyar. Zavulan is Sivan. So who's Tamaz? We go now to Ruvain. Ruvain is Tamaz. Shimon is... Av. So Ruvain is Tammuz, Shimon is Av. What sense is the month of Tammuz? Seeing. What sense is the month of Av? Listening. When Ruvain was born, what did Leah say? Ki ra Hashem ba'anyi, God saw my affliction. Ruvain is the sense of seeing, therefore Ruvain is, is the month of Tammuz. What did Leah say when Shimon was born? Ki shama Hashem, es what? Ki shama Hashem, ki sanua anoichi, yeah? So... Shmia, the month of uh, Shimon corresponds to listening. That's why the sense of Av is the sense of listening. Ah! Oh! So let's go back to the Miraglim. What were the Miraglim doing the first 20 days in the month of Tammuz? Scouting. Looking. Looking, seeing, seeing. That's because the month of Tammuz is the month of... See- and then they came back in Av to give the report and what did Klai Yisrael do? Listen. They listened. That's why the month of Av is the month of Shmia, the month of Shimon. The bottom line is that both of these two Shvatim did not fare well in the Midbar. Shevet Ruvain, they got this week's parsha. They, they joined up with the Adas, Koirach. Shevet Shimon, they got pulled in with uh, the mice of Zimri and Cosby. Okay, so that's very interesting. Can I tell you another thing? There's another Arizal. This is very interesting. By the way, let's take the first letter of Ruvain, Resh, for Re'iya. First letter of Shimon, Shin, for Shmiya. What's a Resh and Shin? Rush. What does Rush mean? Noise. Rash is noise with the ayin. Yeah, good. What's Resh Shin? A rush. What's a rush? What's a rush? What's a rush? Rush means poor. This month, these two months, we're, we're down. Yeah? But let's say another thing. The Arizal says that Hashem's name, Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud, you could spell it B'miluai. So Aleph is Aleph, Lamed, Pei. Dalet is Dalet, Lamed, Taf. And Nun is Nun, Vav, Nun. And Yud is Yud, Vav, Dalet. How many letters? Twelve letters. Each one of these letters corresponds to one of the months of the year. So the month of Nisan is Aleph. The month of Yar is a Lamed. The month of Sivan is a Pei. The month of Tammuz is what? A Dalid. The month of Av is a Lamed. Dal. So Tammuz and Av. Dal. What's a Dal? Porn. Not a doll that you play with. We don't, we're men. We don't play with dolls. Right? You play. Dal. Dal. What's a Dal? Destitute. Destitute. What's Rush? Destitute. But Dal has two meaning, meanings. Dal can mean down, destitute. It can also mean, Aroi Mimcha Hashem, I praise Hashem, Ki Dili Sani. You pulled me up. So Dal means down, and it also means up. That's because in the month of Av, right now we're down. But we're also hoping for Mashiach when we're going to be up. So that's some of the secrets of these months. Now let me tell you one more thing. One more thing, can I tell you? Okay. This comes from Gedaya got me this beautiful sefer, the Shai Yisachar, and I, I like to use it a lot. And he says like this: He says, "What is the permutation for the month of Tammuz? Who remembers? What is the permutation of Yud Kevavke for the month of Tammuz? Anybody? That's good. That, that's what Adar became. What's um, Tammuz? Backwards. Backward. Good. Backwards. What's the, what's the, everyone got that? What's the permutation for Tammuz? Yud ke vav ke backward. What pasuk in Tanakh does that come from? The choze einenu shoive li. What's the numerical value of ze einenu shoive li? Say, come on, how am I supposed to know? I'm going to tell you what it is. This is again the permutation of the month of Tamas. It's 480. 
say, what is 480? What are we going to do with 480? 480. I'm going to tell you over now an interesting thing. There is one of the, the main forces of Tumma in the world is, is somebody by the name of Lilas, Lamed Yud, Lamed Yud Taf. She is the evil spirit, the female evil spirit, and she's bad news. That's, that's her name. Um, she's one of the Koychas Atuma. She is 480. In fact, if you remember, does anybody know after how many years of uh, being in Mitzrayim did we build the Beis HaMikdash? Yeah. After, from the time we left Mitzrayim until we built the Beis HaMikdash, how many years was it? Um, so, so, one second. We were 40 years in the Midbar, and how many years in Israel before we built the Beis HaMikdash? 440. Okay, 40 years in the Midbar and 440. That means we built the Beis HaMikdash in year what? 480. That's the Haftarah of Parshish Truma. The Haftarah of Parshish Truma begins in the 480th year since we left Mitzrayim, we built the Beis HaMikdash. Why the 480th year? So the Chida writes, because it, well, finally it took 480 years till we conquered, who do you think we had to conquer? This Lilas spirit, who is Gemachia 480, and then we were able to build the Beis HaMikdash. Now, we're going to talk about this Lel HaShanah Rabbah more. So just don't tell me, don't say I didn't warn you. But this is, this is in preparation for Hashanah Rabbah. But I want to tell you something very interesting. The Choseh Einenu... What? What is it? What does that have to do with Tamil, though? The Choseh Einenu Shavili is 480. That means it's the month that the Kayach Adin is Shailait. She's the Kayach Adin. The month of Tamil is 480. No, no, no. Um, no? The, no, Ze Einenu Shoveli is 480, which is which is, which, which is Tammuz, which is Tammuz. Ze Einenu Shoveli is for, is 480. Okay. Ze Einenu Shoveli is okay. that means this is the month. This is the month that Lilas is uh, predominant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I just want to. Um, there's an interesting thing. The, there's a medrash. The medrash says that in Yishalayim they had how many shuls? One. Ah, uh, okay, but <laughs> but actually, they had 480 shuls, and all the first of all, who cares how many shuls? Why they have 480 shuls? What's the significance of that? Again, you see that there's something unique about this number that to conquer the koyches hadin, they needed the number what 480. This is the secret of Eretz Canaan. Eretz Canaan is 481, is because. Uh, it was built on the foundation of this person. So what does this have to do with anything? Now we could finally understand the Chassam Surfer we said over many, many uh, weeks ago. And now it will become clear. Okay, you ready for this Chassam Surfer? Chassam Surfer says we have three places in the base of Mikdash. We have a Kodesh, we have a Paroiches, and we have a Kodesh Akdashim. Listen carefully. In the Kodesh, you have Kaftar. The curtain is paroiches. And then the kodesh Doshim is kapoiras. Okay, yeah. What am I going to do with that? What does that do for me? It's just like a mysterious... Uh, some server says, you have kapoiras, you have paroiches, and you have kaftar, which are all the same letters, just scrambled. So you look at the chsam you have no idea what he's talking about. Kaftar, paroiches, kapoiras... So now, let's. anyone have a pen? We're going to actually write this down. We have kaftar. Kaftar are the buttons on the menorah. Yeah? Kaftar are the buttons on the menorah. Then you have the paroiches. What's the paroiches? The curtain. Yeah? And then you have the kapoiras. Look carefully. Which two letters are not so good to go together? Pay and Taf, 480. What two letters, right? Because Pay and Taf are good. right? Pay and Taf are 480. It's not good to go together. What two letters are good to go together? Resh and Chaf. You know, Resh and Chaf is 220. What's 220? Tahar. Tahar is 220. Tes is 9. Hey is 5. That's 14. Plus Vav is 6. is 20. 
220. So 480, you don't want to go together. 220, you want to go together. So you go outside on the Kodesh, you have um, a Kaftar. Kaftar, you have the Pei and the Tuf together. 480, that ain't good. The Chaf and the Resh are separated. You haven't reached Kedusha yet because Lilas is together and the Tahar is uh, separated. You have the Paroiches. You have Resh and Chaf together, 220 together, and the Pei and the Tuf. Separate. This, my friend, Rabbi R- R- Avi Weiss in LA told me, this is a Pshan Nachsam Seifer, based on this concept of... Um, but you go to the Kapoiras, then the Kaf and the Pe, the Pe and the Taf are separate, and the Kaf and the Resh are separate. So what do we learn from all this? You have the, you're looking at me, what is all this all about? This is all this mystical numbers, gematrias. The main Limud we learn is that every single minor detail of Torah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of Avodah Hashem, of the months of the year, everything Hashem created and everything Hashem gave us is so fine-tuned to the very minutia, where even the letters and the numbers that make up our months and make up our Torah is important. We can never say, I don't know, why is this? Um, it's just haphazard. Nothing is haphazard. Everything is very, very detailed. Everything is very, very specific. And the more you dig into the Torah, and the more you uncover, the more we see the wonders of the amazing Torah that Kosh Baruch Hu gave us. Thank you everyone for coming. Have a great day. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.